So we just completed our van build and I thought I'd bring you along for a tour. We were able to get the majority of the van built and finished within 30 days, just like the title suggests. A lot of careful planning went into the build, but a lot of changes were made along the way. And most of the design ideas were just thought up in my head. We got a lot of the materials locally from uh, home improvement stores, but certain things had to be ordered online as they were kind of specialized for this application. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because if you like what you see in this video, I'm going to go into a lot more detail in future videos that cover the electrical system, the plumbing, the, the build itself, including how we insulated the van, and some of the other fine details for the parts that we used that kind of make this uh, unique to us. We do not have any prior experience in building a van, but we do have a lot of DIY experience with other projects that was able to translate pretty nicely into the van. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the inside, and then I'll take you around the outside. All right, so right inside of the doorway here, we have a lot of switches. Uh, these switches here are for the exterior lighting. So mounted a light here, and there's actually a light under the van that comes on. It's night. It's at night, it casts a light on the ground. This is just a 120 volt outlet. And then in here, we have controls, which I'll talk a little bit more in a minute. This one turns on the cooktop, and this is a timer for the 120 volt water heater. So if we look to our right, we have our front seats. They're both on swivels. We went with the Scopima brand swivel seats. The reason we went with them is there are a handful of options to pick from, but they seem to be the best. They are definitely not the cheapest, uh, but when it comes to uh, holding the seats in the van, you definitely don't want to go with the cheapest. So we went with what we thought would be the best um, and the most strongest. And that was kind of the theme throughout the van is if you cut corners to try to save a bunch of money, you'll probably regret it, regret it and end up having to do it again. All right, so over here we have a dinette area and we went ahead and raised the floor, mainly because if you're sitting in this seat, you don't want your legs dangling. Same thing with this seat. So to make them the same height, you can see there is storage underneath here. And then, because we didn't want to waste that space. Additionally, there's storage under here. Um, we do have a seat belt installed that goes through the frame. That was just so someone could actually sit here and be safe. Obviously, you want to table down while you're driving. This table is nice. It's on these lift brackets, which are kind of common in van builds, but they hold nice and sturdy. Countertop is the same butcher block that we used for our countertop in the kitchen here. All right, so in the kitchen, you see we have just a regular faucet here that swivels out. Obviously, it could be used outdoors. Uh, you have the sink, which I really like this sink. It is not too expensive. I got it on Amazon. And we went ahead and added a soap dispenser. We're drilling a hole through there. Just because that way you don't have to worry about the soap falling all over the place. It drains down into our gray water tank. We have an induction cooktop. This is a true induction brand. It's actually really popular in the class B RV world and van builds. Uh, it does run on 110 volts. Again, I did not want the cooktop to be just on all the time whenever the inverter is on. That way you can't accidentally bump the power button and turn it on, which is why I put a switch on that. Also, we noticed really quick that coming in and out of the van, it was really easy to bump these switches, which is why we added this cover right here to keep you from bumping it because you don't want to accidentally turn on your hot water heater because it draws a lot of power. And this is an all electric van. So that's the next thing I'll talk about. Here's our power system. We went with um, an Ames Power 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It is a transfer switch also. So what's really nice about it is uh, you have our shore power coming in. 
and it automatically switches to shore power when you're plugged in. And then when you're not plugged in, it uses your batteries. Here in a minute, I'll give you a look under the van so you can see a little bit more what's going on down there. We're using a Red Renogy battery monitor. We have 300 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate battery, or at 100%. We've got some 12 volt uh, USB ports and a outlet multiple places in the van. Also, this is custom system that I made here for our water level in the tank. You can just press that. I'll show you the water level in the tank. You can press this switch here to turn on the water pump that pulls from our water tank, which you'll see in a minute. There's also a switch in the back. I was able to kind of custom build a little network, which I'll talk more about in the video on the plumbing. As far as that, this was just a piece of solid butcher, butcher block that I cut down and the only finish I put on it was a polyurethane finish. There is no stain, just the natural acacia wood. It looks really nice. Um, also, we went with this Hisense refrigerator. It is just a regular old 120 volt refrigerator. So a lot of people uh, will use some sort of 12 volt compressor fridge. You don't really save a lot of energy. You just don't have to have an inverter with that, but our inverter pretty much runs all the time and it can run in a power save mode where it doesn't really use any power until something is needed. So like until the refrigerator goes to turn on. All right, so our drawers um, were pre-made, did not make these, just added catches and magnetic catches. This was part of a vanity set that I bought because if you buy kitchen, traditional kitchen cabinets, they protrude way too far into the van. So I was able to find this bathroom vanity that I liked that had drawers. It was a 36 inch vanity. I was able to kind of adapt it to work really nicely in here. Same thing, we kind of cut corners just a little bit when it came to the overhead counters. I didn't really want to make them. So we bought some 12 by 12 by 36 cabinets from Home Depot and they actually worked really nice see we were able to cut them down fit them and bolt them to the frame of the van very solid another thing i went with kind of last minute was i decided to add a microwave uh it was nice because we went through all this trouble to finish the area which is kind of hard to finish through here and then ended up covering it all with the microwave but it's nice it fits in there really good Nice small microwave. Actually, we were able to buy this at Walmart for really inexpensive. It was under $50 just due to the size, but it fits perfectly in there. So we do have a smart TV installed. It's on a swivel mount. It can come out. You can watch it from the front. You can watch it from the bed. And the main thing is at night, it can swivel over here so there's more leg room. So this is a full-size mattress, six-inch memory foam. We did have to cut a little bit off each side. Uh, unlike some other van builds, we chose to not do the bump outs uh, on the sides. And there's no reason to. I'm about five foot, 11 inches, and I fit nicely on here. Um, I do touch both sides when I stretch out, but normally, you know, you sleep with your legs bent a little bit. Just depending on how you sleep, it may or may not be necessary to do the bump outs. So this worked good for us. Two of us fit in this full-size bed nicely. And this is a 159-inch non-extended wheelbase, so 159 non-extended. If you had an extended, you could widen the bed a little bit, just depending on what you wanted to do with the space. So down below, we do have pass-through to the basement right here. And we built this little storage area here to be used as a closet or whatever else, just kind of with the space. The whole point was to retain access to the plumbing that is in the shower. So here's our shower. And a lot of people are interested in how to put a shower in a ProMaster. Kind of just went with the uh, FRP walls, which are glued on, uh, kind of a traditional RV style faucet 
really like the shower head. It has three settings. So it has a like a low, extremely just like a drip run, and then a medium, and then a full on. What's nice about that is everyone knows you kind of take a military shower when you're in a van like this to conserve water. And there's usually a spike of hot water that comes back if you shut it off completely on the shower head. So the fact that it let it run, but at a very low rate, makes it so you don't have that real quick influx of water. So we chose to go with a Thetford cassette toilet. Works very nicely. The plan is to just try to keep it number ones and not number twos, but if it's an emergency, it's there. You just have to take it out if you want to take a shower, not a big deal. You could also put it under here and have it slide out. Multiple options for that. Uh, just like a lot of van builds and RV builds, we went with Nautilus shower door. I mean, they really have the market when it comes to a shower door in a van for a lot of reasons, but a little bit pricey, but it, as you can see, it fits very nicely. It still lets the light come through. All right, so for heating, cooling, lighting. So lighting, we have LED lights in the ceiling. They are on a dimmer, so you can turn them down, which will not look great on camera. Same thing up here, we have uh, lighting, LED lights that you can change the colors on a switch here. That's just for accent lighting at night. And then these under cabinet lights in the kitchen area here. We do have a Max Air roof fan in the back. And we actually went with the non-deluxe one because they have a lot of problems with uh, battery voltage when using lithium batteries. So try to keep it simple. Just a multi-speed fan and you have to crank it open by turning the knob right there, which is obviously very easy to do when you're in bed. Do you have a little reading light here that's white or black and it has a USB charger. This is the remote for our air conditioner, which is mounted on the ceiling right here. We went with the Rec Pro made by Houghton, which is out of Australia, AC. The jury's still out on it. It is a good unit. It's 9,500 BTUs. It's pretty much the perfect size for the van. I'm not completely sold on the way it works with the remote. I would almost rather have a traditional wall thermostat to wire it to, which is not an option. But it is super quiet, which is very important in a space this small. And it is energy efficient, which is also very important. I can run it completely off the batteries for a certain amount of time. All right, so as far as heating goes, we just have a little electric space heater. We do not plan on full-timing the van right now, so we will not be in cold climates with it. Um, so the electric space heater is just in case. We get a cool evening where you need to warm up a little bit. We also could run the van and just use the engine heater. A lot of people do use diesel heaters. If I was going to put some kind of um, gas powered heater in the van, it would run off of gasoline. The ProMasters have an access panel right here to the gas tank, and it's very easy to put a gasoline heater. I could even put it in the space in here. Um, so that may be something that's coming in the future. All right, so we've got storage here, here, the whole basement, lots of cabinet storage up here. Kind of left this area clear, and we went ahead and installed a, this is kind of just a normal camper uh, travel trailer window that we put in. And it's nice because it opens and you have a screen. We did also add the windows on the back. Those are just uh, regular ProMaster aftermarket uh, windows. They do not open, um, so we had to cut that hole. Then on the side, we chose to leave the door with no window, just to have more, more privacy and not have that large area where hot and cold could get in. Above here, there's different ways to finish this off. We just chose to go kind of a simple, good looking method. Um, we use this to store like the window covers for the front windows. So. That's the most important thing we found in keeping the van temperature regulated, especially when it's warm, is to put the insulated covers on the windshield and the side windows. And we also have a cover for the roof fan and the back windows as well to make it completely private. 
And then the window over here obviously has curtains that close. All right, so the van itself is a 2014 Ram Promaster. And we went with the Ram for multiple reasons. The main reason being it's very simple and seems to have a lot less uh, issues than the Sprinter and the Ford Transit. And another reason I picked the Ram over the Sprinter is just because there's a lot more room side to side. Most Sprinters, you have to run the bed long ways. And I just thought it worked out good to do this. Also, it kind of came down to availability. Uh, it was really hard to get a hold of one of these vans, especially for any kind of a reasonable price. The high roof 159 wheelbase ones are definitely on a premium, and they know that people use them for a lot of different things. So you're not only competing against people who want them for work vans, but also people who want them to do conversions like this. And obviously, Amazon uses ram promasters for their vans so they kind of have the market on them right now so it is hard to find a new one um, i would have liked to have bought a new one but couldn't so we found this 2014 with under a hundred thousand miles and the sad thing is the prices on them are relatively close to what you'd pay for them new especially back in 2014 Obviously, the prices have risen over the years. So when you're looking for uh, what you're going to start with, the van itself, just do your research and understand the pros and cons for each because there are pros and cons to each. All right, so when we started the build, uh, we started basically by taking care of the floor. So this started out life as like a catering work van, and the floors needed some attention. There was some surface rust on the inside of the floors, that I had to basically just sand off, then treat it. And it was just surface rust on the inside. The bottom of the van is very clean. The Ram Promasters are known for not rusting. They do a really good job of galvanizing the metal and painting it from the factory. Uh, then we then insulated the floor, which with one inch foam and put down a subfloor structure with three quarter inch plywood and then over the plywood we put a self stick vinyl floor that we used extra adhesive on from past experience using this type of flooring found that if you just use the self stick uh, when it gets really hot or really cold it will it will pull apart but if you add extra adhesive at the time that you're installing it that will not happen and then it ends up being almost like a solid sheet of linoleum. All right, so the back of the van, open it up. So here's the expensive part of the van, the basement area. As you can see, there's a lot of storage under here because of some of the decisions that we made along the way. For instance, we use this ProMaster specific water tank which actually is uh, molded to fit around the rear wheel. Uh, it holds almost 30 gallons of water. I did do a uh, custom um, water level sensor, which I kind of showed you a minute ago, and I'll go more into detail on how I did that in another video. Uh, we do have a 12 volt RV water pump, SureFlow pump. The whole van is plumbed with expandable PEX A pipe. We do have an outdoor shower back here. This is our remote uh, pump turn on switch. And this is our gravity fill for our freshwater tank here. So you can just take a hose and fill that up. The shower is nice because it's just a quick connect plug-in. And then you have all your different settings. You could actually even wash the van itself with this. It, it pulls out pretty far. It's kind of like one of my favorite features about back here. In this box here, this is where our batteries are. All right, so we have three 100 amp hour batteries. And the reason I went for three 100 amp hours instead of like a 200 amp single battery because the combined output is more when you use separate batteries. These batteries are made by a company called Chins. Um, I have used 
Battleborn batteries in the past, and except for a low temperature cutoff, there really is nothing uh, greater so far in my experience with the Battleborns than these. And I was able to pay about a third of the price for these. But but had I just had a blank check, I probably would have went with uh, three Battleborn batteries. We have our fused uh, line here that goes into a master cutoff switch distribution bus bars i'll talk about all of this more in another video but i will say that we have three different ways to charge the batteries in the van the first way is through solar power so on the roof we have two 200 watt solar panels for a combined total of 400 watts in ideal conditions they come into our victron 130 mppt charge controller which charges the batteries and that is our primary method of charging the batteries is through solar and i have not had a single day where the batteries have not been to 100 percent within a few hours of sunrise next to that we have a dc to dc charger which uses the vans alternator to charge the battery at 30 amps so it it will output the same amount of power as our solar charger would under ideal conditions so while driving down the road you can top off your batteries, or if you have a day where you don't have sun, you can run the engine for a while and, and accomplish the same goal. The third way that we charge our batteries is through shore power. So you can see the shore power comes in here. It goes into the inverter. Like I said, our inverter is a transfer switch and charger, and it can charge it up to around 80 amps. And then we have a power distribution center over there for 120 volt system and we have our 12 volt distribution fuse block here as far as the water heater goes we did go with a bosch four gallon 120 volt water heater just to keep everything all electric the only difficult thing about going with this very popular water heater in a van conversion is if you need to drain it which you need to do in between uses if you use the van on a non-daily basis just every now and then to go camping you have to drain it i put quick connects on the fittings up there that way i can pop them off and the whole thing just pulls up off the wall and you can actually turn it over and drain it out here it would be nice if there was a unit electric like this that had a drain that you could just open in the bottom and drain through the bottom of the van so over here on the left side of the van we have our shore power inlet this is a furion 30 amp, 125 volt twist lock connection, which I started out by going with a smaller regular extension cord style connection and realized that it just was not enough power uh, to be able to power everything. So when I'm on, when I have the availability to plug into shore power or use a generator, I want to be able to run every electronic appliance that's in the van including the hot water heater, the air conditioner, the stove, the microwave, all at the same time. And 20 amps or 15 amps from a regular extension cord just was not enough. So I made this upgrade halfway through the build and kind of switched stuff out and went to bigger 10 gauge wiring to make it more like a traditional RV. Over here, we do have a city water inlet. So again, if you're at the campground and you have the luxury of having an actual water connection, you don't have to use the water tank inside. You can just hook directly to here, and then that bypasses the whole water pump system and pressurizes the plumbing lines in the van. All right, so the exterior of the van is pretty much just plain Jane work van, which is honestly the look I was going for. I would say we have our solar panels on the roof. We have our AC on the roof, but everything's very low profile. You can, obviously, if you have the trained eye, you'll kind of know what you're looking at just because there's a window right here and the plugs, but I'm not trying to do the stealth thing that seems to be popular. It's obvious what this is. We did add some eye board running boards along both sides, mainly this side, there's a larger one. It's a nice step when getting in and out. We also made a screen, magnetic screen opening that we put right here. 
you can buy them aftermarket they're very expensive some places where we had the ability to make stuff easily we kind of that's where we kind of cut some cost so we made our nice screen door it has an opening right here that opens and closes and sticks together magnetically that way if you are parked and it's nice out you can have the store wide open have all that fresh air coming in and not worry about bugs coming in so last thing i'll talk about on the outside here is the van life outfitters gray water tank which the nice thing is you can't really see it all you can see is the little three inch standard rv outlet here this is just a gray water tank only it holds about 27 gallons um, you can custom kind of make your own solution for a gray water tank but that right there was worth every penny of the $500 we paid for it in my opinion the only thing that I would have liked better is if the outlet was on the driver's side just because that is standard at an RV park is to have your utilities come out the driver's side but the exhaust really gets in the way and where it goes on the driver's side and it makes that not really possible so you just basically have to turn the van around to empty it or just run a hose underneath which is not that big of a deal all right so like i said there will be separate videos uh, where i talk about the complete solar installation there'll be a video for the specifics on the electric uh and how i did it in the van showing you how i and where i ran the wiring there'll be another video on the plumbing system and i will also have links to most of the products that i used in the van in the description so if you see something you like maybe you got an idea there should be a link in the description to the product I used. If there's not, be sure to leave a comment. Let me know. I'll try to help you out the best I can. Final thing I'll say about the build, I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish, especially in a month. We worked every day on it in some way to get it done. It was actually very tedious work, doing all the shiplap and the framing and the flooring, everything about it. Every cut for the shower, is on an angle it's not like building a cabin or a house where you're going to have level straight cuts for everything everything in a van has some sort of curve to it that makes it a much more difficult situation but i am pleased with how it came out hopefully you got some ideas from our build i know we did get a lot of ideas from other people's builds and that's the whole point of sharing this information so again be sure to like the video if it helped you out, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Be sure to subscribe for more, and until next time, we'll see you later.